Hey everyone, Mike Clark here, and today I'm with Joy Pate with Age Smart Community Resources, uh, a great local organization that helps individuals, senior citizens, in, in many, many ways. So thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. We're so happy to be able to share the good work we do. Yeah, 20 programs, that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so how do you run this whole shebang? How do you, how do, you do it? Well, we have like 15 staff members, so okay. we're super small. Yeah. Um, last year we reached about 40,000 people. Wow, 40,000? Mm-hmm. But we, in part of what we do, besides providing the services directly, mm -hmm. is we are a granting and investing organization, so we provide funds to over 20 organizations okay. that, that do this work. So we do a lot of monitoring, and we make sure that the services are quality, and they can maintain their quality, and they're maintaining high standards, so that's a big part of what we so do. So you're not just supporting um, uh, senior citizens, and I know the veterans, it's not just senior citizens, but you're also supporting organizations that have their own niche, is that fair? Mm, yeah, absolutely. That you feel like they could do it and are doing it better than what you are, or what you could do, so then you are supporting them. Absolutely. and That when, shows independence, I can't, yeah. right? Because in, in today's world, we want to manage oversee as much as we can possibly oversee so for you and your organization to say we're not going to try to be everything to everyone we're going to support those that we feel are already doing things the right absolutely. way that's a big deal absolutely and it's like it's it's a tough part of what we do because we're not we certainly set guidelines mm -hmm. and standards for those organizations and it's a competitive grant so every three years they're out for bid and on all those different services mm -hmm. but we're not, we, we don't dictate who they are. Right. We just, this is the service and these are the guidelines for people to follow. Gotcha. But they are definitely strong partners with us. We are strong partners with them. And it is a network. Yeah, it, you're it all takes, in it together. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that, I think here in um, the, the Metro East, we have a very strong network um, of service providers for older adults. and. I'm very proud of that, and I don't see that everywhere, mm -hmm. um, but it is a, a, a grand network. We're very fortunate. Good. I, um, I can't imagine that all this happens without at least a couple volunteers. Is that fair? Well, quite a few volunteers. So we need some volunteers. Is that what we're about to say? Right. Yeah. We do. <laughs> so we have a volunteer board of directors, number one. They're our governing body. Okay. Um, we rely on them to, you know, to manage and maintain our finances and our strategic planning and all of the, uh, you know, manage me, definitely. <laughs> and then um, we also have an advisory council. And this, this, the advisory council is really important to us. Uh, it's more conversational. We, we want them to tell us what is the pulse in those seven counties. Yeah. Because we don't, we can't possibly no. have a level of detail that's going to help us. Uh, you know, maintain services that are going to meet the needs in each county. So the advisory council is really important to us. They make recommendations to the board of directors. They also score all of our grants and yeah. and they host our public hearings, which we have once a year, because we have a, a lot of federal dollars and we're stewards for those dollars. So we want to make sure the public knows how we're spending their money. Mm -hmm. So that's their piece. But we also have a development association okay. for the aging. And that is our fundraising arm, and it's so important to us because when we have grants, and as if you're familiar with nonprofits, it's mm -hmm. like your your funding is pretty rigid. It's this is for this, this is for this. Mm -hmm. But what our private dollars let us do is maybe expand the existing services, but they let us do things that are more flexible to mm -hmm. the needs of the consumer. So that's been very, very important, and we're going into. You know, Giving Tuesday is yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, December 3rd, so we're hoping that we can kind of garner additional resources through that day that can get us through the next year. Well, I can't imagine you're not doing it. I mean, you're doing so many great things within the community. Um, volunteering, uh, Meals on Wheels, I'm assuming there's help, or I shouldn't assume, uh, helping individuals go from doctor's appointments. Do you help with that? Well, and I'm there's a lot. Need volunteering. So we do have a volunteer um, a transportation program, where it's individuals in in their own cars that assist people mm -hmm. from place to place. A lot of people are intimidated with buses, 
Yeah, or sense. maybe you can't get on a bus or their paratransit, you know, accessible transit isn't available in our community. So that's important. The senior health insurance program also has volunteers that, whoa, we could have used them this year because we're overwhelmed with the number of people. I just, I think the boomers we've talked about for years are finally coming in our door and yeah. we're hoping that, you know, 40,000 people this year was a lot more than last year that we served in overall, but that's going to keep going and that generation is going to grow for the next 18 years. So we want to make sure, so senior health insurance counselors, we could mm -hmm. use that. If somebody has those technical math skills or, a, you know, whatever experience they have, but it's really a enriching program um, because you really get to connect one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. with people. We all home delivered meals. Yeah. Some yeah. of our meals in, in the region are, are delivered by volunteers and some are delivered by paid staff. Okay. But if they can be delivered by volunteers, we can deliver more meals because we can go. afford it. Yeah. Um, so that's the, that and the transportation. Um, there's nursing home ombudsman. Those are the voice for the voiceless in nursing homes. Okay. And that's a volunteer position. And I'm sorry, nursing home? Ombudsman. Okay. Okay. So they, they really just are... Um, the eyes and ears in a nursing home, and if somebody's having a, a concern about their family member in a nursing home, and they, you know, a kind of um, a disagreement with the administration, the ombudsman will come in and intervene. So that's a volunteer position. There are well over eight thousand beds, and I think it's even I understated that. So yeah. um, that's a critical thing. And then we also have are the senior Medicare fraud patrol. Okay. So ten percent of the cost of Medicare is because there is fraud in the program, so we're always trying to educate people on protecting their information, reading their explanation of benefits, and making sure that you know they're they're watching their own um, Medicare expenses. But we need volunteers for that mm -hmm. to to speak at civic groups, to um, hand out information to in senior living facilities. So that is a volunteer position, and of course our boards and advisory councils are, are without a doubt. 